Hi guys, it's Sam for Digital Meat and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to set up your player character in Unity with Mechanim. So when we move our um, FPS controller around we have animations on our player character for walking and running and we're also going to sort of set up in uh, Playmaker how to sort of set off transitions between those animations. Um, so really we're gonna we're gonna sort of pick up from another tutorial I did, which was about uh, auto rigging a character for C4D or Unity, um, and that's using Mixamo. So you can view it here on the website digitalmeet.uk or YouTube channel. It's on there too. So without further ado, then uh, let's uh, open up Mixamo. Pardon me. So if you go to mixmo.com, uh, go to the store, we're going to need a few things. So if I go to my assets, uh, it's asking me to sign in here. Come on. There we go. So we go to my assets, and this is the character that we um, set up last time using the auto rigger. So, like I said, if you haven't checked out that tutorial, I suggest you do. Anyway, so here's the character, and it's in my characters, and we've got my animations here. I haven't got anything in there yet. Um, now, if we go to Unity, uh, you can actually use some of the um, animations that come in the standard assets. Uh, so, I think if we look at characters, uh, look in third person, and go down to not animator um, we are looking for I don't know let me let me search here I idle okay so we've got some animations here that can be used but um, I'm not gonna be doing that because the ones that come with unity um, they're actually the, the way their characters rigged up is actually different from my character so when you put them on it doesn't really doesn't really translate well doesn't really know what's going on so that's why i'm gonna actually have my oh, let's pause that that's why i'm actually gonna grab some animations from uh, mixamo so if i go to the store um well, we can see in the features here it's got mail locomotion pack um or you can just search for that if you're not seeing this you can search for mail pack and it'll it'll bring this pack up so in this pack, we've got strafing left and right, running left and right. We've got an idle, which is great. He's just stood there. Actually lasts for quite a while, the idle. Uh, we've got a jump. We've got, got a walk forwards. We've got a turn left and right. And we've got a run forward. So there's quite a lot of stuff in there, really. Um, so I'm going to... Uh, recent animations character, blah, 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 blah. Sometimes the store can be a bit buggy. Like I wanted to view that, um, like put it put it into my um, store. So I'm gonna customize the pack. For some reason, if you play, press customize pack and then click view download, it adds it, which is strange. So we've got a load of animations in there. That's great. Now I'm gonna go back to the store. Uh, the only thing that isn't in that pack is crouch movement so if I type in crouch idle um, and then you can see we've got a lo load of idles for crouch um, let's have a look now we don't want it actually to be a uh, stand into crouch animation we just want the crouch idle because Mixamo is gonna do the blend between uh, sorry, not Mixamo, um, Mechanim is going to be handling the blend between a standing idle and a, cr a crouching idle. So we don't actually need that animation. Um, what we do need is just the just the idle animation itself. Um, I've actually already downloaded one. Um, I think I chose this one in the end. Yeah. Okay, so we can... You and download that. Okay, so that's good. Okay, so we've got a crouching idle in there now as well. 
Um, and then uh, what else do I need? I need a crouch strafe. Now, a lot of these ones, they're holding guns. Um, in fact, all of them, they're holding something. What did I search for? I think it was crouch left. Let's try that. Yeah, and I, I use this guy in the end because he's got his hand out in front of him. It's, you know, for, for the purpose of this tutorial, it'll be absolutely fine. So I added this one. Yeah, that's fine. Um, that's good. And I also obviously needed a crouch right as well. I'm not, I'm not going to add that to the thing. You can do that. I've already done it. So... Uh, same thing again. I've, I've got the guy with the bow. There he is. There's a crouch right. And then I've got a crouch walk as well. Um, mm, 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 mm. There's plenty to choose from. In fact, I think I went with this guy here. And I think there's a crouch backwards as well or crouch back maybe um <clears throat> yeah so there's our guy walking backwards and i grabbed that one as well so anyway once you've um, added all those um if you go to my assets my animations once you've added all those so as you can see i've got my crouching idle and uh all the pack of stuff which comes in a zip file, so you just have to unzip it. And uh, importantly, the, the character co uh, comes in that as well. And I'll show you why that's important in a minute. Um, but yeah, once you've done all that, you can tick these boxes, Q download, and it'll ask you, how do you want them? So I had FBX, um, T pose is fine. Leave that at 30 seconds, keyframe reduction, none, because you can do that inside Unity. Um, and then you can queue the download up and then it will go onto your download page and um, where it says process in here um, you can then hit download and uh, they'll appear in your um, downloads folder on your computer I'm just going to delete these because I've already done this I don't actually need these anymore so let's delete them so once you've got your uh, cross that off so once you've got your uh, uh, downloads there's going to be some things you don't need to do uh, well I suppose first things first let's get our character in so what do I need to do here um, let's have a look that's that okay so this is my um, assets folder for the the project we've been working on um, again if you haven't seen this before this is our scene that we've been setting up slowly as we've been going through our playmaker tutorial uh, tutorial so i definitely check that out um so okay unity projects xbox controller assets now if i go to in, into imports you notice that there's a new folder in here called animator i created that and inside animate we've got animation clips and animation controllers so i suggest you make those it's just a way to keep things tidier and um again you'll uh, you'll see why now in a previous tutorial i um this character here let's open this up in cinema 4d this is our auto rigged character um it's obviously not got any textures on it at the moment now this is where a problem might occur let me go grab my um clip so if i go into in our imports folder if i go into animator and then go into animation clips you'll see that i've put some of the clips in here not all of them so um i'm just going to go to my do, 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 downloads folder Bear with me a second. Assets. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. So once you downloaded your stuff from Mixamo, you're going to get a, a load of FBXs. And I'm going to import them all in. 
Yeah, replace these files in the destination there. That's fine. So we've got a list. We've got a crouch, walk forward, back, left, right, crouch and idle. And then we've got an idle state, jump, left strafe. Um, that's the left running strafe, that one, because we've got a left strafe walk in here. So we've got everything we need in there. And um, in that pack as well, you should get a, a character FBX. Now, before, when I... Um, uh, before in the uh, previous uh, tutorial I actually dragged my character that I downloaded from Mixmo and, put it, and opened it up in Cinema 4D and I, just to show you that you could you know you could bend the um, uh, the joints and everything and your mesh will move along with it as such and then what I did was I went to file save and I saved it out as just a Cinema 4D file in character now, the problem with doing that is that um, Cinema 4D flips the Z axes of our character. So it it flips it so it's facing backwards. Um, whereas in the, which isn't a problem, that's fine. It's just that when you um, try to apply the uh, animation clips that we downloaded and they're in FBX format, their, their Z is the other way around so it confuses it so this is why i was um suggesting that from mixamo when you download that um that male mo uh, locomotion pack that it includes the character in there as well so instead of using the uh, the one that you you know previously uh, saved out as a cinema 4d file i definitely suggest just putting the fbx there and calling it character or whatever you want because then everything syncs up then Okay, so now that we covered that, let's get our uh, character into Unity, I suppose. So um, we're going to need to go to our import, export. We've got our character there. That's all good. And we've got our animation clips, so it should all be in the project now. Um, as I've said before, this is a scene that we've set up in previous tutorials. We basically set up the controller. I'm using the Xbox controller right now. But it allows me to look around, walk, strafe, and if I press the right trigger, run. Left triggers are zoom in and out, and we uh, the X buttons are use, so we can open doors and whatnot. B buttons are crouch, and the A buttons are jump. So that's what we've got set up so far. Okay, so <clears throat> let's get to it. If we now open our imports folder. We should have this character here. Um, and if we go to the model, the scale factor is one. We don't actually need to change this to 0 0.01 because um, it's an FBX. You only have to do that if you're saving out as a Cinema 4D file. So it should come in at the right size. If we go over to the rig, the animation type, well, this is a humanoid rig. Avatar definition create from this model um, that's okay update reference clips I'm not sure what that means click on this button to update all the file referencing from this file should set all these files to copy from another avatar blah, 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 blah. I don't know what that does but okay well that's fine animations none and we don't even need to import any if there are any on there we don't we don't need them so let's get our character into our scene so there we go we lob, lobbed him in now let's move him back and um there he is he's looking looking pretty good there you'll notice that he's got textures on him now you're probably thinking how did i get the textures out of cinema 4d um, which sounds like a bit of a silly question really, but um, you'll notice that in Cinema 4D, let's just uh, get that texture. I'll go into the content browser and add our mail back into our scene. Um, where is he? There he is. So we can actually get rid of that, all of that, and we can get rid of the eyes, and we can get rid of the eye reflection, and it's this body material in fact I'm like, I can lob that on our character because it should have the same UVs and it does so there we go there's our guy now 
if we open up the material, we'll see that we've got a color channel with this texture in it. But if you actually, um, you know, it doesn't actually live anywhere. It's not an actual texture. It's wrapped up in this lib file here because it lives in the content browser. Um, you can see that the texture lives preset prime dot lib 4D 3G, you know, it's all wrapped up, but you can actually get to it. So all I did was I went into this window here by clicking on the actual, you know, texture field. And then you say edit image and you can see it's a 4K texture. That's quite big. And then you just go to file, save as, and then you can save it out any way you like. And I did the same with the reflectance and the normal map as well. You're going to need the normal map. So you just click on that, edit the image, save it out, and jobs are good. Um, in fact, uh, what I did was for where I put them, just to let you know, I just created a folder called text, and then I blobbed them in here, and uh, that's fine. So that covers everything for Cinema now, so I can close that. So basically, you can see this text folder now. And on the um, on the character itself, sorry, if I just click on the character up here, the actual character, you can see this uh, material. It's got no name. Um, and you want your albedo to be white. And that's where you lob your color channel. So I just character color lobbed in the albedo. The specular I lobbed in the metallic slot. And the normal I lobbed in the uh, normal slot. And that gives us this result of our guy okay so let's just um i'm going to select my character and i'm just going to flip him around 180 degrees so he's visible to our camera let's have a look at him there he is all his glory he's loving it um so we've got a character in the scene now let's have a look <sighs> right we want our character to be able to move around when we move our controller. So at the moment, he's completely separate from that. So if I move around, he's just stood there like a dork. There we go. But he's meant to be us. And at some point, we're going to change it. So it's kind of like a first person view. So what we want to actually do is um, let's open up our FPS controller. Um, in fact, I'm going to move the Playmaker GUI element up there so it's not in our way. And I'm going to move the door up there as well because we're just going to be working on this. And we want our character to be part of this hierarchy here. So I've put it under the FPS controller hierarchy. So now when we hit play, I'll move around and our character moves with us. But he's in a T-pose and looks like a total idiot. So how do we get our guy... Um, you know, moving around with us. Well, first of all, I'm going to back him up a little bit so we can see more of him. Um, and we're going to need to do certain certain things to our character here. Uh, as you can see, if we select our character and look at the inspector, we have this animator component on it, and this is the thing that's going to sort of link our um, this the, our, our blend trees and all that stuff for the animations to our character so we need a controller in here and uh, we don't have one at present so um, I don't think I've got one anyway I've, I've already made one it's called character but the way you make a controller is you go to create so if I select I select the controllers and oops, shit. go to create oh, for fuck's sake Sorry guys, I'm just having a bit of an issue there. Delete that, I didn't mean to make that. So I'm selecting any controllers, going to create, and there you have an animated controller. And then all I did was I named that character. Um, and so I'm gonna delete that. And this is what you get. So then you select your character, it asks what it's, uh, your um, controller is, and you can just drag that into that field. There we go. And here you can see we've got a load of information about clip count and, and it's all zero because there's no information in there whatsoever. So how do we um, see what's within this character controller? Well, we need to open another window. So if you go up to window, scroll down to 
uh, animator window. There you go. It'll add, I already add it up, but it'll add, it'll add this animator window to the top. And what you get in there, well, let me uh, let me delete that. Uh, what you get in there off the bat are these three things. You get uh, any state, entry, and exit. So this is a lot like um, Playmaker. It's basically a state machine. So if we look at the B button crouch, which we made in a previous tutorial, we'll see that, you know, you bleed from one state to the other depending on certain conditions. And that's exactly how Mechanim works. And uh, I suppose we could, we should get to it. Right, first of all, we need, you know, this is our entry state. So it's a lot like the start here. And then it bleeds down to your first state. So we're going to need a first state. And for us, that is going to be idle. So I'm going to create a state, create an empty state. And I'm going to call this new state. And you can name it up here. If you select it you can, in the inspector, you can name it up here. I'm going to call it idle. Okay. Now it's going to want a motion. So you can see up here in the motion field, it's, it's, it hasn't got a motion. So we're going to need to um, create one. So remember where we put our animations in the animation clips all here. There we go. There should be an idle state in here. Okay. And there is. And what we've got to do is, so our idle can match up to our character, we need to define what the rig is. So I suggest you do this for all of these. Select all of them. Animation type, humanoid. Avatar definition, copy from other avatar. And then it's going to say, well, what's the other avatar that we're copying from? And it's your character. So if you twirl this down, uh, this is created when we brought our character in and we said create avatar from, you know, from this. Um, grab this character avatar, lob it in this source here and hit apply. And it will do that for all those animations. So now all of these are taking their avatar information from this, from our character, which is great. And also another note for all of these, I don't think you can do multiples, which is, yeah, it's quite annoying actually. Um, um, so you're going to have to go through these one by one. Um, animation compression. I'm going to turn that off. I don't need it to be compressed. We need a loop time because otherwise what it'll do is it'll play the, uh, the animation, the idle animation in, t you know, in it's from beginning to end, but it won't loop back round. It won't go back to the beginning. So it'll get to the end of the animation, then just end. And obviously if you're not pressing anything on your controller and you're just stood there idling, um, that's no good. Uh, so you want it to loop. So we've got to uh, hit this loop time. And then it asks some other information, Tr root transform rotation. It says body orientation. I'm going to change that to original, uh, the root transform position, Y original and the root transform position X and Z center of mass. I'm going to say original. And we also want, so all of them are original, but on the root transform position, Y, we want to click this bake into pose. And then if we go down the bottom and apply that beautiful. So if we click back on our idle state and drag our click back on our idle state, go to our character idle. We can't just drag this and lob it in there because we're actually dragging in the entire FBX there. You've got to twirl it open and then you can see the motion clip in there called idle. So we can drag that in. There we go. And I'm hoping, um, pardon me. When we start, there we go, he's in an idle state. So that's his default position there. He's in an idle state, he's loving it. So there you go. 
Excellent stuff. Okay. So now we've got an idol. He's not standing there with his arms out like that, which is really, really good. Um, so what do we want to do next? Well, what about movement? Um, you know, obviously when we run forwards, we want him to look like he's running forwards and all the rest of it. And obviously when we press the right trigger to run, we want his animation to speed up so he looks like he's running. And I'm going to do that in the animation window via blend trees. And these are brilliant. I've actually recorded this tutorial um, once before and did a simple setup for walking forwards and backwards. And this is the video that I'm replacing it with because um, this method is so much cleaner um, and just better. It's way better. So in our animator window, we're going to need to transition from idle to something else. And that something else is going to be a blend tree. So if we right click in our animator window, it says create state. And then it says from new blend tree. So we're going to create this new blend tree. I'm going to click on it so we can see its name in the inspector. And I'm going to call this locomotion. Locomotion. Okay. Um... Da, 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 da. Uh, I think we don't have to deal with anything there, but the difference between this idle state and um, locomotion is if I double click on locomotion, it will open up this screen. So we've got something in there now called a, a blend tree. Well, I'm going to rename this. I'm going to call this locomotion as well, actually. Um, And uh, it is going to want to know what I want to blend between. So at the moment, we've got this blend value here because we haven't actually got any parameters up up here. I'll, I'll come to that in a minute. But um, it's going to want to know what we're going to be blending between. So if I uh, right click, we can either add motion or add a blend tree. So if I added a motion, you can see that We've got a motion up here, so we could put like a walk or something in there. But what I actually want to do is nest a blend tree within a blend tree. So I'm going to select this motion and delete it. I'm going to select uh, this again and right click on it and say add blend tree. And it adds this blend tree. So I'm going to select this and rename this and I'm going to call it walk. And then I'm going to click on this again. And I'm going to add another blend tree. And I'm going to call this one, if I select that, I'm going to call this one running. So now we have two blend trees. And it's within these that I'm going to put our animations. So what do we need in our walk? Now let's see. Um, ooh, we are going to need all our uh, motion. So you can either right click on this and say add motion, or you can highlight it and come up here and just press this add button. So we're going to add motion, add motion. And you can see it gives you this graph of how they're going to blend. But we're not actually going to use this. We're going to change this blend type so it's 2D simple directional. Okay. Oh get back on our walk. So it's going to say what are our, what are the parameters that are going to allow us to blend? Well, let's get all, let's get our motions in here first. Um, I think we're going to need yeah, we're going to need five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, don't worry about any of this at the moment. Right, our parameters for um, uh, um, what defines what, you know, what controls what animation is playing is obviously going to be our uh, thumb stick controller. So if we push forward on the thumb stick, um, he's going to walk forwards. That animation is going to play. And if he walks backwards, it's going to play a backwards walking animation. So 
we need to define what these parameters are. And at the moment, we don't have any. Um, so what we are going to do, this is where Playmaker comes into it now. Um, I suppose we should get that out of the way first. Yes. Okay. So on our character, we are going to have to make a, so if you select our character, we're going to right click to add an FSM to it. And we should probably, we should probably, um, name our FS, FSM so we can easily keep track of stuff. And I'm going to call this FSM forwards and backwards. For, I'm just going to call it forwards backwards. That's fine. Okay, so for our forwards and backwards movement, what do we need to do? We need to get the axes of our controller. So go to action browser, say get axes. Fine. So we've got to get axes in there. You're saying axis name, what's our axis called? So let's have a look at, if we go up to edit, go into our project settings, go into input. Um, so horizontal is actually our strafe. And I think vertical, yeah, so left thumbstick vertical, that's the axis that we, we want to get. Okay, so if we go back to our character and we enter axis in here, um, multiply one, that's fine. And we want to store this in a variable um, and we're going to, so obviously it's a float, this variable. So we're going to say new variable and we're going to call this ver uh, variable vertical because that's what we're storing. We're storing the vertical of our axis. So that's fine. Um, that's absolutely great. So uh, every frame, do we want to check it every frame? Yeah, because at every frame, um, the position that we're on when we're pushing our thumbstick up and down is going to be different. So we need to check it every frame. Now, we, we're going to need to be able to send messages from here. So we've got the axes and then we're going to need to send it to the animator window to a, a parameter up here. So we've got this, this parameter blend. We don't actually need this parameter, but um, we'll, we'll get rid of that in a minute. In fact, let's get rid of that now. She's used by locomotion. No one cares. <laughs> um, let's go back into there. Um, ba -da -ba -da -da. Okay, so the parameters blend. It's empty. Okay. Yeah, that's why, why it was there. Um, ignore me. Just going off on a tangent there. So we're going to need to be able to send this uh, float variable to... Um, our animator. Now, to do that, we're going to need a special set of commands. And to send those commands, we're going to need some stuff. So if we go to Playmaker and go into add ons um, and go into the ecosystem, you can see that we've got the ecosystem browser here. Now, I've actually already got it. But for you, you'll be. Um, Du, 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 du. It's a shame that I've already got it in there. But basically, for you guys, you'll need to go to um, add ons, ecosystem, edit all windows. Da, 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 da. Okay, what's this stuff? Okay, add ons online. Here we go. So, what you guys are going to need to do is first of all, we're going to need the ecosystem browser. So, you just hit that, and then it will um, it'll tell you about the ecosystem. Um, download package for um, Unity 5, so grab that. So it downloads this package here. And then you uh, you basically double click on the package. It decompresses it. Nothing to import. All assets from this package are already in your project, so I don't need it. So, But that's what you guys will do. And then there's something else you're going to need. So if you go to Playmaker, um, Add-ons, Add-ons online. There's going to be a set of commands that you need for Playmaker that um, pertain specifically to the animator window. Um, and it's this here. So if you go down to the action packs, um, 
you're going to need this mechanism animator. So if you grab that, it's going to open up this thing and you need this playmaker animator actions unity package so you do that it will download the package oops shit i didn't want that I wanted showing folder and then like before you decompress the package again i've got nothing to import because i've got it all in there and once you've done that don't know if unity hangs for a minute by the way when it's installing that the playmaker welcome window will, will pop back up as well and um and uh, yeah, it may, it may hang for a minute, but once you've grabbed those things, now we can do what we need to do. So now we've got that, we can um, we can uh, add, go to our action browser, and you'll have a whole new subset of um, of stuff, which is this animator tab, and you'll have all these new, lovely new things in there, which is great. Now the th the thing that we're going to use. We've got our axes. Um, let's just close this a minute. Uh, I think we already did that actually. Da -da 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 -da. No, okay, cool. So we get our axes, which is vertical. We store it in a variable. So if we go to a variable thing, store it in a float called variable as well. We can even check that that's working by hitting play. And if I push forwards, you can see that it goes up to one. And if I press it up slightly, you know, it's a value between zero and one if I press up. And if I press down, it's a value between zero and minus one. So that's exactly what we need. <clears throat> so if we open up our action browser, what we're going to need to do is set float. Um, if I type in that, you can see that um, we got our, you know, set float value, set material float, blah, blah, blah. But we want to set the float in the animator. So we need this, the set animator float. So if we double click on that, we get this. It says, right, okay, so it needs to know some information. What's the game object that we get that we, that's got, well, it's asking, what is the game object that has an animator component? Well, it's our character. There's our, um, there's our character there. And it's this that's got this animator component on it. It's got the controller in it. So when it says uh, game object, we can actually keep it on use owner because this FSM is attached to our character. When it asks us what the parameter is that we want a uh, um, change, it is actually talking about this a parameter in the, that we've set up in the animator window. We haven't actually set up a parameter yet. Um, so we should probably do that. So I'm going to add a float because that's what it is. And we're going to call this vertical because I'm just keeping it simple. Uh, select our character again. I'm just going to drag this up for a minute. So when it says, what is the parameter that you want to set the float of? Um, I'm going to tell it it's vertical. Vertical. It's saying, okay, so what value do you want to send to vertical? I could type, I don't know, 2.5 in here. And if I press play now, you see that this parameter, if I go back to the animator window, this parameter is 2.5. Okay. But we don't want to do that. We don't want it to be 2.5. We want the value to be whatever this access float is. That was the whole point of this. So we get our axis, we store whatever the value of, um, you know, I was pushing up and down our axis is in this variable called vertical. And that's what we're going to use for this value. So we can clear, we can press this thing here and we're going to say, we're going to use the variable vertical. So that's what it is. I'm just going to zero that out. Okay, so value, that's our saved float. Damp time, I'm going to leave that at zero. Uh, every frame, yes, because not only are we checking that our left thumbstick every frame, but we want to then send that value accurately to this um, parameter up here, every frame. Okay, so now we've got that. We can test it. So I'm going to hit play. I'm going to press escape and go to our animator window. Grab my Xbox controller, and now I'm 
pushing. Ooh, do I need to be? Yeah, I think I do. So if I just lob the game window there and then go back to animator, it's a bit cramped, but you'll see this um, vertical parameter up here. If I push up, you can see it going up. And if I push down, you can see it having a negative value, which is what we want. Now, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. You've just watched me do that, and I'm going to do exactly the same thing for the uh, horizontal now. Um, so select our character again. I'm going to click on FSM up here, and it says add FSM to character. So I'm going to add another one. Okay. Um, before, as I did the tutorials, I was making empty game objects and lobbing them underneath just to sort of keep it... Um, visually for you guys so you could you know separate it out in your mind but on on the character i'm creating multiple fsms on it and you can see the list of those here so you've got the fsm that i did for the um the fir the first one in fact i called that state forward backwards didn't i i'm gonna call the state get uh vertical vertical axes and i'm actually going to call the fsm itself um, forwards, backwards, and it's a good thing to name your FSMs because when you start getting a list of them on an object, they can be identified easily. So you can see I've got forwards, backwards, and then on FSM2, I'm going to click the FSM button this time, and uh, I'm going to call that, I suppose, strafe because that's what it's going to be. Um, okay, so. Do, 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 do. Strafe. There we go. So now we get in our list. We got forwards, backwards, strafe. That's fine. Okay. Uh, and for this state, I'm gonna call it get horizontal axis. Brilliant. So we need to do exactly the same thing again. So I'm gonna go to the action browser. I'm gonna well, I'm gonna need a set animator float. So I might as well grab that while I'm here. And I'm also going to need a get axis exactly like we did before. Brilliant. Okay, so the axis this time. Again, if we go up to our input. So that was our vertical for it. We're going to need horizontal. And that's its name. So that's the um, axes that we're going to need. So put our horizontal there. Leave the multiplier on one. Um, we're going to need to store it in a variable. I'm going to create a new variable. And guess what I'm going to call it? Yes. Horizontal. Um, let's have a look. Is this? Yeah, it's a float. Make sure it's a float. Um, so go back to our state. And then as before, we're going to set an animator float, which will be this. Uh, one of our parameters up here. So it's asking what the parameter is. So let's let's create a parameter that is going to control, and we're going to call this horizontal. Horizontal. I had a brain fart there. Horizontal. Lovely. Reselect our state. So the parameter that we want to control is horizontal. Ooh, if I could spell, there we go. Lovely. The value that's going to be defined by the variable that we just set up. So let's choose that horizontal. Um, damp time none. Every frame. So let's test this now. Uh, so if you look at our parameters up here. So it's running, we got vertical and horizontal and a mixture of both. So if you go diagonal in one direction or well, any direction. So you've got the whole gamut of movement being expressed by these two floats. Okay, so there we have it. We've sorted out that bit. Just gonna take a drink. Okay. So now we've got that, let's lob our game window back up here. So we've got a little bit more room to play with. 
and we're going to need we're going to need another FSM actually um we're going to need to know something about our uh we're going to need one more value to make to make these things work we're going to need to set up a parameter and I'm going to call it oh Cortana's kicking off there um, yeah, I'm going to add a parameter, which is a float, and I'm going to call this walking speed. Well, I suppose it's just speed, isn't it, really? But, um, yeah, let's just call it walking speed. That's fine. Okay, uh, you probably noticed a break in the video there. I had a bit of a brain fart, but, um, okay, so we've got this parameter walking speed set up. So we click on our character, um... We've got our forwards and backwards and strafe. We're going to add another FSM to character. And uh, what we're going to do with this, we're going to we're going to call this. This is what's going to be sending information to this parameter here. So we're going to call this walking speed. This FSM. Uh, we can just call this um, the state. We can call that listener. And we're going to need a get axis vector. Um, okay, so we've added get axis vector. Okay, so let's have a look at this. What does it do? Right, horizontal axis. It's asking for it. In our case, it's horizontal. That's what our input is. That's that's fine. If we go up to the input here, you'll see that. Our horizontals controlling our strafing and verticals controlling our movement forwards and backwards. Um, and it's already filled those fields for us. So that's fine. The multiplier for now we'll leave for one. Um, map to plane you can leave as it is. It's not relative to anything so you can leave that. Uh, right, okay, store vector. Um, you can usually store this in a vector and it will be a variable and it's usually a vector three. And um, unfortunately in Mechanim for a parameter, you can't store that. You've got these options, float, int, ball, and trigger, which is quite annoying. But the reason that I'm using this um, get access vector is for this store magnitude. So if anyone knows of a way to store a magnitude without using this get access vector, I'd love to know. But um, you'll see that it's actually kicking up an error saying, oh, the, uh, you know, the get access vector is you're not actually storing a vector anywhere. Well, I'm not going to be. I don't care. I just want it for this store magnitude of, you know, my inputs. So that's what I'm using it for. So like I said, if anyone knows of a better way to do that, I'd love to know. Anyway, so the store magnitude, we're going to have to store that in a variable. Um, so... Oh, there seems to be already a global called... Um, uh, walking speed. I wonder why. Uh, let's refresh shoes. It's not being used at all, so I might just get rid of that. It's obviously not needed. Uh, let me just hit play and check. Yeah, everything seems to be working. Oh, you notice by the way that when I press the B button, the crouch button. You get squished. And uh, there's a good reason for that. And it's something that can be sorted out quite easily. So we'll, we will go over that at some point as well. But for now, let's get back to our walking speed. Okay, so store vect, uh, store magnitude. That's what we want to do. New variable. We're going to call this walking speed. Um, so that's where it will be storing that. So... If we hit play now and look at that store magnitude value underneath, you can see that it's, it is storing it, which is good when we move it around, which is what we want. Okay. And then we need to pass it to the animator. We need to pass it to this walking speed thing. So as before, we're going to uh, type set float. Um, and we want this set animator float. 
object, we can add that. Uh, game object, we're going to use the owner because that's the thing with our character control on it. Parameter, which is this. So we can grab the name from up here and dump that in here. The value, well, the value of it is going to be this walking speed. Um, so we'll just select that variable. That's what's going to set this parameter. Um, the damp time, I think we're just going to leave it zero. So that's fine, uh, but we're going to do it every frame. Okay, so now I'm just going to pull the game window off again, like I did before. Make this, come on, there we go. Go to the animator window. So if we look at this walking speed parameter now, when I when I hit play, it should be receiving data. There we go. So not only are we getting our vertical and horizontal, we're also getting a walking speed as well. There is one issue though. Uh, that walking speed parameter is saying zero. And um, ideally, uh, if I click the character, um, no, sorry, FPS controller, and hit play, you can see that our walk speed when we're walking normally, uh, if you look on the right hand side here, it's set at 1.5. So our walk speed is 1.5, and then we, when we hit run, it shoots up to 3.5. Uh, but that's not being re reflected in our parameter for the animator window. So what can we do about this then? Well, uh, if we select our character again, pardon me, it's to do with uh, this multiplier here. So to actually get a result of 1.5 when we're walking, we can change the multiplier to 1.5. So now when we hit play, if you look at the walking speed parameter and we go full tilt, it's saying 1.5, which is exactly what we want. Okay. So, Let's lob our game window back on here um, and open this up. Now we've got these things set up now. We can now get onto the business of blend trees, but I think the, um, the tutorial has gone on long enough now. And I think it's probably a better idea to break them up into segments. So I'm going to leave the tutorial here and uh, then we're going to pick up from here on our next one. So as always, I'm just going to save the scene. Don't forget to check out the website, digitalmeet.uk. Uh, also the YouTube channel. And, you know, follow me on Twitter if you want updates of when new tutorials are out or Facebook. So, um, all right, until next time, bye.